This is shocking. My container, I did something wrong. I don't know what I did. Last season of Five Minute Demo Dare. We are live on LinkedIn and YouTube. We're going to be building a data pipeline that doesn't exist right now and going to be leveraging forecast functions. The best way to learn is by doing. We're going to be going fast today. It was a perfect demo. Three words, ease of use. This was super relevant because literally every data person that you talk to, we're always doing CDC all the time. And with that, I invite everyone to participate in this. Batman's going to be doing the demo today. Calling all builders. Welcome to Snowflake's five-minute demo dare, where contestants race against the clock to demo the latest and greatest Snowflake products and features. Our judges will rate the demos based on three criteria. How ambitious is the demo? Is the demo useful and replicable? And finally, how engaging and interactive was the demo? Each category is worth five points, and demos can rack up to a total of 15 points for a perfect score. And now your host, developer advocate Felipe Hoffman. Whoa, thank you, thank you for being here. I'm Felipe Hoffa. I'm super excited to see all of you here. And I'm super excited to see three live demos, the best three live demo presenters of this season. So they did it all online. Now it's their turn to do it in front of you. We will have a timer. The timer it will count five minutes down and things are live. Sometimes demos fail. I've seen my own demos fail. You have seen my demos fail. Let's see what happens today. And to help us judge today, we have three stellar judges. There are our judges, uh, Alex Guto, our director of product marketing. Alex, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm excited to see some amazing demos. Yes, what was your favorite thing of this week? This week, of course, on product marketing, all of the amazing content and launches and all of uh, you coming to learn and build. Good. Maybe you will have a new favorite thing right now. We also have Amanda Kelly, uh, my co-star at Tasty Bites, also co-founder of Streamlit. She understands how to deliver a product that people love. So she's going to judge the demos today on how much people love and understand what people are doing. But you tell me, Amanda, how are you going to judge today? I mean, there's probably going to be some brownie points for if anybody presents in Streamlit. I'm just going to admit my bias here. Uh, yes. Or if there's any great sequel jokes, as you know, you and I both really appreciate those. Sequel jokes are awesome. I have one saved if we have time later. And not, not only she's the co-founder of Streamlit, she's also director of product management at Snowflake. And speaking of directors of product management, we have Josh Clark. Uh, he loves data warehousing. He loves sharing all of he has learned. Uh, throughout his time in Snowflake. I love following him on LinkedIn. Uh, Josh, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Felipe. You're doing great? Yes. Any highlight of this week? Uh, talking to customers, launching some new features that we're excited about, and having you wake me up after a Thursday where I'm getting a little tired, but now I'm fired up again. Yes, fired up for the last event of the day. What was your favorite feature you launched? As of join. As of joins. As of joins. They're really, really cool. And to watch the timer, we have a friend that's going to be watching that no participant goes over five minutes. If the participants, if our demo presenters go over five minutes, the polar bear might eat them. So careful with that. And now this beautiful sunglass, that's not only a beautiful sunglass representing that we have limited time, it's signed by Benoit and Thierry, the founders of Snowflake. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Thank you, Ver. And who is our first participant? Keith Maxwell, Airbyte Solutions Engineer. How are you doing, Keith? Doing great, thank you. How are you? Feeling good? Feeling great. Demo ready? Demo, I hope. Wi-Fi is so far so good. Wi-Fi okay. is good, excellent. Uh, just for everyone to know, what's your demo about today? Uh, so my demo, um, basically on average, customers try to add two to five sources um, per year, and they're trying to add new sources uh, for new use cases. So my demo today is to create our own custom source. So this one is a third-party API, and it is getting cryptocurrency data. So basically, anyone out there in the crypto world looking to monitor Bitcoin, uh, exchange rates, things like that, we can track how high it goes, how low it goes, 
and send that data into Snowflake for some predictive analytics, make, maybe make a little bit of money. Excellent. And you are going to do this with Airbyte. Through Airbyte. So for people that don't know Airbyte, what is Airbyte? Airbyte is an open source ELT solution, so the ability to ingest data from essentially any source and send that data to your destination, such as Snowflake. Excellent. Let's see Airbyte in action. But before I start the timer, let's talk to the judges. What do you think about this demo? What do you expect to see? I, I would, adding new data, I think adding new data into sources into Snowflake, new use cases, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I'm one, like, I'm curious about crypto and how do you how to do crypto analysis in Snowflake? That should be fun. Yes. Are you going to do some analysis once the data is in? If I have time, sure. Oh, let's see if the timer runs out. I'm curious if you're if you're getting it in. It's important, right, to get the data in. We want to get it in face, but are we going to look at the quality of the data? Are we going to be checking up kind of the the health of the pipeline, things like that? We are going to view the health of the pipeline. We're going to see how much data we loaded, and we'll actually view the data once it's in there. Um, and it's going to have uh, um, price history, things like that. So, I love it. Let's monitor what's happened. Ow. I'm going to be looking for the ease of use factor here. Mm. How quickly and how easily can we go and build this? Because the fun happens once the data's in Snowflake. We can go get a lot of uh, insights there. So making it happen with ease is a big one. Yes. People are eager to see if you will do this in five minutes or not. Before I start the timer, anything that you want people to know that doesn't count against your time? So Airbyte, we're built on open source. Uh, the demo that I'm going to be doing today is with our cloud platform. So fully hosted by Airbyte, we're never going to store any data. So I think that's pretty much it. So we're building a brand new source in five minutes. Whenever you are ready, the animation will go on and start the timer. Five minutes on the clock. Woo. Go. All right. So what we're looking at here is Airbyte Cloud. As you can see, we have over 350 native sources out of the box for you to choose, choose from. But what we're going to focus on today is the builder. The API Builder allows you to essentially create any custom source from scratch simply using a REST endpoint. So what I have here today is some API documentation. This is just a CoinStats API. It's a public endpoint. So what I have here is the list of URLs. So what I'm going to do is take all of these URLs, add them as tables into Snowflake. So all we need to do first is choose our base URL. In this case, I'm going to go over here. And if you can see here, this is the base URL and we need to authenticate. So I'll come over here, give this a base. And the authentication method, we support API keys, bear tokens, ID password, OAuth, or session token. So everything is all out of the box. In this case, it's a simple API key. We're going to inject that into a header. The header name is API key. And I have my key here. So I'll go ahead and copy it. And for testing purposes, I'll just paste it here. Them. Once we're authenticated, now we can actually go ahead and start adding the stream, start getting some of that data. So here, you'll notice this little icon spinning. Hit add a stream. And in this case, if the first URL that we want is just a simply backslash coins. I want to get all of my coin data, all that cryptocurrency information. So the stream name, we'll just give it a name. We'll call it all coins. And the URL path is simply backslash coins. I'll go ahead and hit create. And just like that, we have our authentication into the base URL and our endpoint, and we're going to make a get call. So I go ahead and hit test. And just like that, we have our results. Now, we don't need this header information, so the result tab in our record selector, I'll hit result. And we can denote our primary key for any unique values. So if I hit test one more time, now you can actually see the data that is being returned. So I have my ID, my coins, all these columns. These are going to be the columns that get created in your Snowflake tables. We have the ability to pass in any parameters, any headers, any body. So in this case, a parameter, maybe we want to denote our currency, just USD. We support pagination out of the box. So if you need to offset, page increment, or use a cursor, everything is available here. If you're looking to run incrementally, so you want uh, to run any new or updated data, such as using a last, time, uh, last modified date. We can do that here. And from here, we're, what we're going to do is go ahead and add in another stream to get another table. And now in this case, things can get a little bit complex, because now I want to get the details about a specific coin. You'll notice this little variable, dynamic value, coin ID. How can we get that? So what we're going to do is add in a second stream. 
In this case, I'm going to get those details. And I'm going to use the exact same path for now. But in this case now, I can choose a parent stream. So what that means is I can take the IDs from the previous API call and dynamically pass them in to get the details about the second coin. So in this case, I'm going to choose my parent stream from the API that I just created. The parent key is that primary key. And the value is simply a variable called stream ID. We can name it anything we want. So now when I come back up to the top, this URL path now becomes the dynamic val value of the stream ID. So if I hit test one more time, you can see all the details about an individual coin broken down by partitions. So quick, easy way, all I've done so far is I've authenticated. I've gotten two different tables set up. So now when I come back over to my sources and I hit new source, I have the API that I've already created, the cryptocurrency rates. Again, I'll plug in my API key. I'll hit set up source. Working against the clock here, hopefully this doesn't take too long. Once we're authenticated, the next step, we're going to retrieve the metadata, we're going to retrieve the schema. That's passed. I'll create a connection. We're going to send that data into Snowflake. Choose our tables and hit run. From there, we can look at our data. Almost perfect timing. And we have all our data. <laughs> But that was great. I saw that you were connecting to Snowflake. I saw the seconds that took for the data to move. But it's our judges that get to judge. So what do you think, Amanda? Well, I'll say in terms of engaging, I was on the edge of my seat to see if it was going to get done in time. I think we okay. cheated you on a few seconds, too. So I'll, I'll give you credit uh, that I think it did. Um, I mean, this, it's an incredibly complex thing, right, that, that people need to do, and they need to do it all the time. So uh, I thought it was a really intuitive UI um, connecting in. And even though we didn't get to see the Snowflake side of things, I, I would have loved to see the power in exploring that a little bit more. Um, but I think really cool how quickly you can set those up. Yes, I was impressed about how complex it was to bring all of this. It's not just bringing the feed. It's doing the complexity of it, but <laughs> just missing the... Do you have your, is it still running? Maybe we can show the data inside. In the meantime, uh, what did you think, Alex? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely an ambitious demo. I agree. Uh, we probably owe a couple more seconds there. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, for doing such a complex task, I really appreciated, one, how easy Airbyte made it to see exactly what you were doing, guide you through that experience. Um, the data is there. That. Data is there. Uh -huh. <laughs> Um, and you also walking us through uh, all everything that you were able to uh, accomplish during this. I thought you did a very nice, clear presentation throughout the way for a very stressful five minutes. <laughs> yes. Thanks. Let's get uh, Josh's opinion. I'm glad we got to see the final data. That makes me happy seeing it in Snow Site. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that caught my eye, I like the ease of use, but I also like the little checkbox around incremental loading. Uh, I think that's probably a key thing as you're streaming data is let's make sure we're not reloading everything but getting incremental data. Yes. Any final thoughts before we bring the next participant? Um, just how quick, easy, under five minutes. Um, like I said, on average, customers are adding two to five sources per year. So this just makes it so quick and easy for you to add a new source on the fly rather than going out and looking for a new vendor. And um, once that data is there, power of Snowflake, you've got your AI, ML, predictive analytics, things like that. That's where the exciting stuff happens. Uh, we're just here to make lives easier to get that data in. So, Thank you so much, Keith. That was a great demo. Let's give him a big applause. Thank you. And it's time to welcome our next participant. How are you doing, Josh? Good, are you? Good, good. Tell us a little bit about Coalesce. Yeah. And what so, do you do with Coalesce? 100%. So I'm a product marketing data engineer at Coalesce. And Coalesce is a data transformation solution that allows you to build, manage, and maintain data pipelines at any scale. 
And we do that through both the, the use of a user interface, but giving you the accessibility to be able to write as much SQL, as much code as you want to. So we'll be going and throughout doing that today. Excellent. So what's your demo about? Yeah, so the demo today, we're going to be taking a, some call transcript data. It's going to be a lot of text data that exists within a specific column. And we're going to be taking that and using large language functions within Snowflake to be able to translate that data to multiple different languages. We're going to run a sentiment analysis on that using those same LLM functions. And then finally, we're going to run an extract answer to basically be able to reach into that specific column with all the text data to be able to get some specific answers out of that data to be able to associate our sentiment analysis with that information that we pull out. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Translation, sentiment analysis, and extracting answers. Correct. I like it. What do our judges think about this? It all sounds great. I like that your name is Josh, and I'm counting on this to be a really great demo. Teams of Josh's. I like it. I'm excited uh, that you're using Cortex AI. Uh, yes. This is going to be a fun one. It definitely sounds ambitious in uh, five minutes. So let's see if you can get through it. Yes. Uh, anything you would like us to know before we start the timer? Yeah, I guess real quickly. So we're going to be using a fictional data set. It's going to be part of the Snowflake Ski Store data set. So it's basically going to be call transcripts of customers who have called in about feedback. It could be really positive. It could be really negative. That's why we're using the sentiment analysis. And then we're going to be operating on this concept of a node within Coalesce. And a, a node is effectively just an object that is being created within Snowflake. So that could be a table. It could be a view. It could also be something like these LLM Cortex functions that we're going to be working with today. So that's going to be what you're going to be seeing on the screen that we're creating are these nodes that are effectively acting as objects within our Snowflake account. Let's create some nodes. Any question before we start? Ready to start the five minute timer? Ready to go. Ready to go. Let's get five minutes on the clock right now and it's your time. Awesome. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we need to add in a data source to begin building out our pipeline. So I'm going to click on add data sources here. And I'm going to go and grab the one table that I'm going to be working with today. We could add in multiple, but we're just going to add in this call transcripts data sort set for today. We can click into it and actually view the data that we're going to be working with. And I mentioned it's going to be in multiple different languages. We can actually see in this transcript column on the right-hand side of the screen that we're actually looking at some German right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually break this out into some tables so that we can separate my French and German data so that we can process that and translate that into English. And so what I'll do is write some just really simple where filters here within my first table here and basically say where my language is equal to German. Just really basic SQL. And by clicking my Create button down here, I'm just going to be creating this object within Snowflake. Again, these are just representing objects in Snowflake. By clicking the Run button, we're basically executing the DML for this specific object, which is inserting that data into that object. Once we're done with that, we use a lot of metadata within Coalesce. So I can go ahead and duplicate this object, which will save all of the settings that I had before. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and process my French data. And I'm actually going to use an in this time, because I'm going to pre process my English data at the same time as well, so I can pass both of those through. And again, once I've written that, I can create the object by selecting Create. And once that's created, I can select Run. While that's happening, I'm going to go ahead and add in my first layer of LLMs. And I can just add that here with my LLM Cortex function. Both of those will be added automatically to the tables that I just created. And in the first one, I'm just going to use my Cortex package drop down on the right hand side of the screen. And without writing any code, I can select Translate, select the column that I want to translate, which in this case is Transcript. And I'm going to translate from German, in this case, to English. And it's that simple. We can go ahead and create that object now. And again, I will populate that with data by selecting on Run. And we'll do the exact same thing for our French data. We'll select on Cortex package, toggle on Translate, select the column we want to translate from, and we'll select French as FR and translate to English. And so again, select Create to create that object, and now Run to populate that. Now that I have this language processed back into English, I want to be able to unify these data sets together. So what I'll do is create one more stage node here. And I'm going to union together both of those LLM functions that we just created a second ago. So I'll select Options and select Multisource. And again, doing all this without having to write any code, I'll select Union All. And I'm going to select that other LLM function that I've just created a second ago, which is processing my French data. And I will go into that node to be able to generate the specific reference for both of my nodes. So I have one node that I created a second ago, and then I added in the union of this node that we're looking at here. And so I'll go ahead and create this object, and we'll select Run to be able to populate that with data. The last thing I'm going to do is add in one more LLM function node here. We'll add that in just like this. And I'm going to do a couple different things. The first thing I'm going to do is duplicate that transcript field that we've translated into English. I'm going to select Duplicate Column. 
And we're going to call this transcript under, underscore sentiment, because that's what we're going to be doing with that column. And we're going to change the data type of our original column to an array, because I'm going to extract an answer, and it's going to output as an array with a confidence interval associated with it. So for my first column, I'm going to select sentiment and pass through that sentiment column we just created. And then I'm going to use an extract answer function to pass through our original transcript. And I'm going to pass through a specific question that I want to have an answer returned. In this case, I'm going to say, who is the customer? And in this case, Coalesce will run that function behind the scenes and return that answer to me. So I'll select Run, and we'll be able to view the output here once this runs. And I'll be able to scroll over, and we'll be able to see the transcript with the associated score of what that should be. Now that I've created that, I'm going to create one more node here. In this case, I'm going to run create a fact table. And the last thing I'm going to do is our customers that we just pulled out, I said who is the customer, are stored in this array. And again, without writing a line of code, I can go to derive mappings, select JSON, and I will have my answer automatically, my answer and my score automatically output here without having to write a single line of code. And I know that that's my customer name. And so I can create this object and run that as well. And back in our browser, we can see the entire DAG that we've just created here. And over in Snowflake, we can now take a look at that data within dark mode within Snowflake to be able to understand a bit more about what we're looking at within our customer data set here. So if I run the data in our new table here, we'll be able to see all of that data. And if I go to my chart, I can basically see the sentiment score associated with those customers that I was able to extract out of my entire call transcript. So if we want to talk to customers that had a, better, a worse experience, we can reach out to those customers. Or we could take a look at things like product defects, if there are defects involved. We can take a look at those, and by looking at the chart, we can see which defects, which problems our customers have the most problem with and have a negative sentiment about. And with that, we can view all of the pipeline that we've just created within Coalesce <laughs> and see how we can operationalize LLM. They love it. That was a perfect timing. Judges, what did you think? Josh, you did not disappoint. That was a great demo, like I expected. I love the the use of text data, the built-in support for the Cortex LLM function, so I'm, I don't have to write any code because I'm just a product manager. Um, <laughs> that was fantastic. Uh, and dark mode at the end, just to top it off, very nicely done. Very nice. Amanda. I mean, definitely extra points for using dark mode, um, so that's great. Um, yeah, I loved it end-to-end, -end, you know, uh, especially the no-code parts. I was even kind of saying, ah, that from and to, could we make those right entry fields to make it even easier, right? You know, less hard to mess up. You know, I would say I, I love that you took it to a chart at the end. It's just so much easier to understand that, right, than just the kind of sentiment scores. And if we had a longer demo time, I would love to see how you would put that into action. Are you going to make an app, right? How could you share that with others? I think that would be really interesting. Let's make the data actionable. That's like the next step. And Alex, what did you think? Plus one on dark mode, way to know your audience for this. That was great. Uh, I second Josh on this. The no code element was phenomenal. It was so cool to be able to see all of the different Cortex functions uh, built in. Um, and so, yes, I, I love the demo, love the ambition on it. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Any last thing you want people to know before you leave? Yeah, so I mean, kind of going back to what we just talked about in terms of being able to really easily operationalize things like LLMs or Cortex functions, including the rest of your data pipelines. Coalesce makes that really easy to do while still giving you access to write as much of that SQL as you want to. So we'll leave on that. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. We'll see you in a second, and then we'll get to decide what was the favorite demo. But they love you. That I know. OK. Uh, last but not least, the third best demo presenter of this season. We didn't rank them by this order, but they were the best. Is Andrew Evans. His notebook came out first, and Andrew's here with us. PhD Data Principal ML Engineer. How are you doing, Andrew? Thanks so much for the intro, Felipe. I'm doing fantastic. How's everyone's summit been? <laughs> yeah? Super awesome. So today, I'm going to be showing you two things. In my spring demo, I showed one container services application. Now we're doing two. The first one is how you can run anything in your enterprise in Snowpark Container Services. Run your enterprise in Snowpark Container Services. And the second one is I'm taking things up a notch. And instead of using an LLM, we're using a large multimodal model. We're going to be taking screenshots from our application and then analyzing them in the Streamlet app in another container where we have a multimodal model running. So that's two containers. 
We're going to talk about how it works. You said the magic words for Amanda, but I did. tell us a little bit, what is pH data? Why should people love pH data? pH data was founded nine years ago, and we are huge in the modern data stack space. We're a pure play services provider with massive love for Snowflake. I absolutely love coming to Summit. I run the AI practice at pH data, and I just love seeing all these AI features and helping customers get their AI into production. Awesome. Judges, what did you think of that pitch? Ambitious. I mean, this might be the most <laughs> ambitious one yet that we've heard. And I, and I know I've talked to a number of customers, um, even at Summit, who were really looking to see how they can make container services easier and leverage them. So I'm excited to see what you can do with two containers in five minutes. Cool. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm also excited. I think it's not fair to go after Amanda with the Streamlit <laughs> app. That seems like cheating. But I, I like the ambition. I think Snowpark Container Services unlocks a bunch of imaginary, imaginative things, and so I'm really curious to see what you're going to come up with. Oh, yes. Um, how about you, Alex? I'm excited to have some fun with the multimodal model. That was going to be awesome to see. Multimodal. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Anything else you want people to know before we start the timer? So my demo is called Data Operations and Observability in Manufacturing. That's an Easter egg for you, and you'll see in a second. Manufacturing. Let's do it. Are you ready to start the timer? Let's go. Five minutes on the clock. Ooh, now, when you're running Snowpark Container Services, there's a couple of boilerplate things I wanted to get out of the way for you if you run this demo at home. You need to make sure that you get some roles set up, make sure that those grants are running well so that you don't just do everything in account admin. I went ahead and baked some of this ahead of time just to save us a little bit. And then we need to create some endpoints. Container services applications have to be able to talk to your web browser. And so it's important to get that stuff unlocked. And then the next thing we're doing is because we're using a multimodal AI model, we have to download that from Hugging Face. So we have to make sure that that container has the ability to access the internet. Be careful when you unlock these kinds of features. But in this case, we're going to need it to download that model. Once we've created that demo role, there's two big components in container services to remember. You need a repository for your Docker containers, and you need an internal stage for where you're going to put your spec files. These are similar to Kubernetes spec files. And then the next thing we're going to do is create an internal stage to communicate between the application and the large multimodal model where we're going to be analyzing those screenshots. For the multimodal model, we're going to use the smallest GPU node available. You may be able to also use a CPU node if you have a small enough model. And then we're going to use a CPU node for the application. Now, admittedly, I wanted to show everybody a really cool virtual factory floor, but PH Data didn't want to pay for one. So I had to do the low buck option and make a virtual factory floor myself really cheaply. So let's go ahead and figure out what's going on here. We'll go ahead and log in to our virtual factory floor. Some of you may have seen this factory before. And we're going to take a little tour and see if there's anything we need to analyze. Maybe there's some product defects that we want to get a screenshot for. Maybe there's some issues in the factory that we want to be documenting. Yeah, all right. Now let's analyze some of these images. So OK, admittedly, I'm running Doom in container services. But it is that flexible of an application and that easy to get your enterprise running. At the same time, this other stage is this other app is perfect because you can just connect it to a different stage. And if you have an internal stage of images from your business, you can just use this app with it. So from here, we can choose what kind of mo model we want to use. I'm using Olama in the back end, and it has a couple lava models to choose from. We'll just use the smallest one for right now, but feel free to play with this if you run the app at home. We can then refresh images to go get stuff from the stage. It looks like it, uh, it hates me, so. So uh, let's just rerun from the top, see how we get on. All right, we'll use this image since it seems to be working. We can then see what the image is and then decide what kind of question we want to ask of it. So we could ask something like, hey, what's the main character holding? Or we could ask something like, is the floor blue? Then we get an answer from that large language model, that large multimodal model that's running in this same container. So it's going to go ahead and fire up and give us an answer. And then 
when we're taking lots of screenshots, we may realize that there's lots of images that we want to analyze with that same query. And so if we feel like we're getting a reliable answer from it down below, we can scroll up here and just tag answer for all images, and then it's going to output all the answers and track them to a Snowflake table. While that's running, let me show you a few things about how this works. So within the application itself, we have, let's go in there, we have a really basic package. So if any of you have worked with the Snowflake uh, PyPI package, it's super easy to connect to your session. Within container services, one thing I want to highlight is that they give you an OAuth token in the container to use, and you can use that to connect, and then all we need to do here is convert our files to PNGs and push them to the stage so that we can run. Let's come back over here and check our answer. Okay, so we got an answer. Maybe it's not super good, claims it's 90 degrees counterclockwise, and we're like, what? But the great thing is, is we can continue to tune our prompt, and we can continue to work with different models to make sure that it's working great. And then when it is, we'll just go ahead and answer for all images. And it's still very grumpy with me. And then where all those answers are going to show. So here's where all of our screenshots are living. We can see here, check that stage out when they got taken. And then, of course, we can select queries, and when it's done, you'll see here that we get what model we use for the query, what the image name was, what the prompt will be, the response, and then, of course, the insert time. Wow. You managed to do so much during these five minutes. That was awesome. Uh, but judges, what did you think? You know it is a great demo dare finale when you get both doom and dark mode. Yes. <laughs> Um, I loved your excitement around Snowpark Container Services. That very much came out and is so cool to, as you said, see how flexible it can be used on this. I will say, I thought there was quite a lot of pre-baked code in there, um, but also understand you were covering a lot of ground in this demo. Yes, very fair. Thank you. We need the only demo rated PG-13 for the violence, right, potentially involved <laughs> in that. I, I did not expect that coming today. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I... I you, you attempted something very ambitious, and you know, as we even saw in the keynote demos, which we'd run through many, many times, right? You know, sometimes those errors come up. That happens when you're doing something ambitious. You're going to break a few eggs. Um, so kudos to to keep plowing through and doing it. I think we can see where you were going and the power of what you were doing, and, and you automatically got a bonus point for using Streamer, anyways, from me. Yes, I love the Doom acronym as well as running Doom. That was pretty good, and you and you touched on a whole bunch of stuff. SPCS. RBAC, stages, network rules, multimodal models. Uh, you covered a lot of ground, so I like the ambition. I like your guidance to not run everything as account admin. Very good, thank you for doing that. Very important. Nicely done. Thank you so much. Uh, any last thoughts before we let uh, the judges pick their winners, but the real winner will be picked by you. All of this is gonna be in a Git repository hosted by PH Data. Check it out sometime. If you don't want to go the PG-13 route, spin up the other container with your own images from your enterprise and start playing with multimodal AI. Yes, I, I, I wonder if we could do Animal Farm instead, just yeah. to have something more peaceful. <laughs> but that was great, and I love how everything worked together. Thank you so much, Andrew. Uh, thank you so much to all the participants. I love how when people take risks, we love taking risks. Um, but I want to know more from the judges. What did you think? Who was your favorite? Did you want us to come up on stage now? If that was you, the guidance please. we were told. Yes, All right. come to stage. We can walk up. Josh, I have you here. Who was your favorite? It is hard to choose. I think they were all good. I, I love the ambition of the Snowpark Container Services demo. Um, I like the inclusion of crypto, cryptocurrency uh, and the ease of use that we saw. Uh, but I, I like Josh's demo the best. I think that was, if I look across the the uh, um, categories, I thought that was really relevant, it was engaging, um, I liked the energy. Relevant, engaging, the energy, that's awesome. Uh, how about you, Amanda? Well, I just wanna say, because I, as a director of product at Snowflake, I don't just oversee Streamlit, uh, my team also make dark mode, yes. um, so calling that out. We also look at a lot of things for making ingest better, so a lot of these were near and dear to my heart, especially in terms of solving different user problems. 
right? Um, things like ingest are things that maybe don't get, don't look as, you know, cool on demos, but they're really, really important for things. Now, as a, as a very particular stickler judge, though, I'm going to have to give it to the Coalesce demo for actually completing it in time and showing us the, the end results. So I think all three were great demos, but, uh, but I'll give it there for having it uh, completed end to end. Completing demos on time. And yes, you can thank Amanda and her team for delivering dark mode. Thank not you me, so the, the team. Well, the, team all the team, but yes. You know, the I team. wanted to be clear that I'm not entirely biased but, towards Fremont. Uh, you get to take some credit for that. And Alex. Yeah, I very much appreciated that we saw three very different demos today. Uh, and that's incredible. Uh, very different use cases, very different audiences on this. As much as I love Doom, though, mm -hmm. I also need to give it to Josh and Coalesce on this. I thought it was, one, uh, also a very ambitious, very useful demo, but I think he did a great job of really speaking to the use case and uh, who, who the users are. Yep, it's great to take risks, and it's even better when they pay off. Uh, Josh, I was ready. You might win on energy, though, like across <laughs> all the other, other contestants. I mean, it's been a long conference, and we collect the last votes from everyone. Let's uh, close the week. Where were you? What were your highlights of the week of Dev Day? Highlights? This you we get to close the conference before the final party. I, my favorite moment is actually just about to happen, which is when you, Felipe, are finally going to tell my favorite joke that oh, you've created on SQL. Oh, knock knock. Who's there? Select from. Select from who? Select from where? <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Been waiting all week for that one. <laughs> We had it ready in case something failed. And Alex, how do you want to close this week? Thank you all for being here. Um, it's so cool to have a whole day dedicated to uh, developers and builders here at Dev Day. Uh, and there's still parties and, and networking to come. Um, but it is these conferences summit is not the same without all of you. You are really what bring it to life. So it's awesome to see you all here. It was awesome to have you here. And let me bring the three participants to see their faces when we realize who the winner was. We have Airbyte, we have PH Data, we have Coalesce, we have the votes have been compiled. Let's see who the winner was. The winner today, according to your votes, was... And ta-da! Demo to Josh Paul! You have won. Alex, do you want to give him the hourglass? Thank you so much. No, you really deserve it, but thanks to everyone. Thank you, Josh. You are the fa audience favorite. You win season one. We might have season two, so prepare your demos. It could be any of you next year on this stage. And with this, it's time to close Dev Day. Thank you very much. Let's make great demos. Let's enjoy our time together. I'm Felipe Hoffa. Good night. Thank you, judges. Thank you.